Okay, so uh, thanks everybody for coming to the last lecture already in our third year of free uh, non-credit lectures being put on by the University of Victoria Student Society Hempology 101 Club and the International Hempology 101 Society. Um, all of these lectures are now at least being put up on YouTube uh, soon after class, uh, there's a YouTube channel if you want to see uh, different events that Hempology 101 has put on as well as past lectures and uh, it's going to be a long five months before we get to do these classes again. But uh, on the other hand, next year we hope to have more guest speakers than ever. I have uh, more activists. Uh, I think interested in coming over here from Vancouver and otherwise. Uh, I think uh, each year we'll see uh, more and more improvements uh, as this year we have for our first time the PowerPoint presentations. So uh, yeah, I guess uh, the other part too is uh, I will be privately giving out a small handful of certificates again this semester to people here uh, that have been to every week. I'm not sure how many people online have been able to show up every week. You'll have to uh, get in contact with me personally through my email or through the uh, Hempology 101 forums. I prefer you to join the forums and send me a private message and participate, but at the very least you can uh, email me to let me know that you're worthy of a certificate. We give out certificates of completion to people that have come to uh, I think you know, 95 percent of the classes in, in the semester. So uh, today's lecture is on uh, something that I'm more of an expert on than most, which is the history of Hempology 101. And it's uh, something that uh, is a, a passion of mine to be sure, um, but it's not something that I created. So I thought to spend a few minutes giving the the context of how I came to Hempology and sort of put my own stamp on it. Um, I posted actually, if you go to our forums, uh, article from December of 1994, which was probably one of the first times Hempology 101 was written about, because it, it only started in November of 1994, where Mark Emery is talking about all the various things that HempBC is doing to help inspire change in society through the use of, uh, of cannabis and, and education about it. And so I posted on our Hempology 101 forums this article kind of highlighting this paragraph where he talks about uh, Dana Rozak. Uh, that's not Dana Larson. You may be confused and it's easy to do because even before uh, Dana started Hempology 101, in a, a small kind of apartment building, essentially, your apartment room, well, it was one room really where she lived across the street from NBC. Um, and, uh, uh, but that, that wasn't the, the, uh, the, the, the root of it. In fact, Dana Larson was here a few weeks ago and I, I, I surprised him by reminding him of the Hemp 101. And, and I am loath to admit that I forgot to bring the poster, but. In 1993, Dana Larson, Ian Hunter, and others organized an event at Simon Fraser University called Hemp 101. Among the speakers were criminologist Neil Boyd from Simon Fraser, and it was in, in some very real ways the beginnings of what became Hempology 101. So, um, I'm not sure who came up with the name Hempology 101. It may very well have been uh, Dana. Uh, I'm not sure, but she became, as Mark said in his, uh, I don't know if it was an article in one of the newsletters or not, but in his article, um, Dana was uh, attempting to inspire the youth movement and putting uh, information booths up at Simon Fraser University. It was mentioned in particular, handing out pamphlets about uh, medical marijuana and uh, the, what was the Frankfurt Resolution, which was uh, a resolution passed in the early 90s, I believe, that uh, started to discuss harm reduction and, and the failure of the drug war. And so uh, Dana essentially, yeah, I think it was called Terrapin Station Center for 
dead heads, I think was the term of it. And I think she actually inherited this little space that was uh, in the building that's now burned down where Blunt Brothers used to be. It was uh, on the same floor that I think Spartacus Books was on the second floor. If you've never been there, I think it's still around, but it, it, it could not be what it was before in some sense. It was very uh, neat. Uh, and there was a lot of stuff happening on the second floor where, again, Blunt Brothers eventually was, was uh, below. And uh, yeah, small room. Uh, I'm not sure how quickly and, and well attended it was, but word was out uh, on the street relatively quickly. Um, I attended my first meeting in January of 1995 and uh, the meetings had only been going on for a few months. I'd only moved to Vancouver from Ontario in October 94. So it really within three months of moving there, I'd heard about it and it was relatively new. So um, I guess uh, it, it, both of us were, were due to merge in some ways. So uh, my first meeting I came across, there might have been 15, 12 people. Um, not a large group, um, smoking herb, not in any really organized way. I think there were certain points where uh, the meeting was brought to attention and you know there was a, a, an agenda that was attempted to uh, occur, but uh, you know really a flow, a free flowing uh, attempt to share ideas and herb and, and just kind of gather as a culture and educate each other, right? Not worrying about the general public, but hey, you know, there's a lot to learn, you know, there's a lot to share, let's, you know, teach each other and <coughs> teach other people was the spirit. And so having a philosophy degree from university and thinking that being a writer and educator was my, my, my goal in life, uh, deciding to write a textbook for herbology uh, seemed very realistic and, and, a, and, a, and a very good goal. And, uh, and then uh, moving to Victoria seemed quite practical for several reasons, partly because the scene in Vancouver was thriving, or at least appeared to be. And so uh, I thought coming to Victoria was a good step. It's the provincial capital, obviously. There's many reasons to be an advocate in this city. But I also like the smaller town, and it's, uh, uh, there's many other reasons to, to be in Victoria. So you know, I decided to move here. I guess September 95 was uh, the, the date for me to start. And I uh, began having weekly meetings downtown Victoria. Um, they sort of spread around the first seven weeks. Uh, it started out at the Wailing Wall, uh, where uh, yeah, uh, the meetings in Vancouver were Tuesday nights, so I decided Wednesday nights was best. Uh, and uh, because I didn't really have a place, I uh, thought I was just going to move here in a backpack, but I worked in the summer and bought a van, so by the time I, I got going, I had a, a van to live in, which was brilliant, to be sure. And uh, just put out a, a flag with a bunch of pamphlets. And I don't even think I had a book on hemp at the time. I think I just had pamphlets that I basically scooped out of Vancouver. And so, uh, and, and a few, obviously, from Ian Hunter at Sacred Herb, who was uh, the first person to attend. In fact, actually, Ian came down with me, and I put out my information. The first person that he drew to us is still a very good friend of mine, Jose. I don't see him nearly as much as I'd like, but uh, um, I do have fond memories of that first meeting. But um, the Wailing Wall only lasted for, uh, uh, I think, about six weeks, and uh, it was not the, the right place to do it. There's a lot of drug trade and, and police presence and otherwise there. So at that point, we decided to move around Victoria. And after a short time, the library was the best place for us to meet. So we stayed at the library every Wednesday night for a few years in very small groups before uh, being kicked out of there and again moving all over Victoria. So we had the Wednesday night meetings every single Wednesday for over 12 years. We had pot rallies in almost every single conceivable place in downtown. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures. But really, these are only a glimpse of what's available. If you check out hempology.ca and go into our picture gallery, there's a lot more pictures there. And we've done way more than that, too. So this really is kind of creaming the crop. 